The reason your Bible study sucks. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The reason your Bible study sucks is that you are studying the Bible and not studying God. The all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, holy creator of the universe has revealed himself to men through the pages of the Old and New Testaments. The Bible is the primary and only sure way of knowing God, but we often approach the book without a clear understanding of what it's trying to convey. The Bible contains commands, but it's not a book about commands. It offers tips and techniques for wise living, but it's not a manifesto for a successful life. The Bible teaches God's incredible plan of salvation, which we call the gospel, but it is not fundamentally a book about the gospel. The Bible is the self-revealing of God to us. It provides glimpses into the heart and mind of our King. If we'll approach the Word of God seeking to know its author, we will never come away from the text bored. In fact, if we commit ourselves to consistent, diligent study and then obedient application, an amazing thing will happen. Our minds will be renewed. As we seek Him and contemplate His ways, our souls will be shaped like His. As we consider what God loves and what He hates, our hearts will begin to beat in tune. We'll take on the character of Christ because the Bible faithfully communicates His character to us if we approach it looking for Him. Knowing Christ and having the mind of Christ is what makes a man great in the kingdom of heaven. But we must take care not to downplay or ignore portions of God's Word that we do not prefer. In our day, for example, it's quite fashionable to stress the grace of God, but not hard truths. We gush about His mercy, but remain tight-lipped about His righteous anger at sin. To grow to the full stature of Christ and give the world an accurate picture of Him through our good works, we must uphold the complete picture of our King. Anything less, and we'll be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Above all, we must take care not to use God's Word as a tool for manipulation or personal gain. The scribes and Pharisees of Jesus' day diligently studied the Word of God, but not so that they could know Him. They wrongly adhered to its precepts to keep the covenant blessings flowing their way. They brandished God's law like a whip to keep the regular folk compliant to their will. As a result, they were completely oblivious when the main character of the book showed up in their midst. They rejected their king, and he returned the favor.